This could very easily be my most honest video I have ever made. <sighs> Let's begin. Hey friends, I am Faith. If you're new here, I am a seminary student. I'm a pastor's wife. And just because I'm addressing a lot of theological and exegetical issues, I find that it might be helpful for me to mention. I have studied the Bible. I have an entire undergrad degree on it. And now I'm finishing up next month my seminary degree um, studying the Bible. And I have been raised in complementarian circles and fully educated in primarily just complementarian circles. I come from a complementarian background and yet within the last six months, I have realized that I have not educated myself on the other side of the argument, at least sufficiently enough. And to be honest, more often than not, I had been shamed to even consider reading other people or other points of views. You know, I think as Christians, the less you know, the more scared you are to read other people. You're afraid, oh, what if they're a different denomination? Or what if they teach something wrong? Or what if I learned bad doctrine and I don't know it? And like, I hear that all the time from you guys. So I know that's something that you guys struggle with too. And it's a legitimate issue, but I think the more you grow in your faith, the more important it is to read other people. And so I really have been reading other arguments. And so I'm at like the perfect spot in my spiritual walk to give you guys an unbiased viewpoint. One that knows a complementarian argument really well, was raised in it, and then also one that's becoming increasingly very aware of the other side of the argument. And if you're new here, this is like part of who we are here at How to Faith and Life in this family of mixed believers from all different denominations, is I'm a strong believer in the beauty of different denominations. I think it is something to respect. And so right off the bat, when one of my Patreons mentioned that Mike Winger was going through a series of videos to address women in ordination, shout out to Melissa, so thank you, Melissa. Everybody loves Mike Winger and he's making, I think a series of videos on women's ordination and the questions around that. And so I'm really intrigued to see what he addresses in this first video and what he will address. So let's just begin. I had to read so much content. There was so much debate on this and you're gonna see, you likely have no idea how much debate there is among scholars and lay people on this topic. I love that right off the bat, he acknowledges that it's a debate because his thumbnail does make it sound like he's coming from a very complementarian angle. And yet he comes into this and he's like, there's a lot of literature, there's a a lot of reading, which I can attest is true. And it's a huge debate and there's a lot of debate over it. Truthfully, the more I read, the more I second guess the people in my life who have been like, it's no debate, it's clear in scripture. I'm like, have they read anything? Because it makes them sound kind of ignorant. Like the more you read on the topic, the more you see, oh no, it is a debate for a really good reason. Let's keep going. Before we can approach the Bible, we have to ask ourselves, do we have rules that we're using to bypass the scripture entirely? He used what was in his thumbnail, that phraseology of bypassing the scripture. I think I know what he's getting at by that, like an exegetical approach to the scriptures. Before I ever started reading anybody from the other side point of view, I was always taught, well, they are bypassing scripture. They're not respecting scripture and what it says because Paul says very clear, women are not to speak up in church. That should make you ask a lot of questions because I don't know about you guys, but I do speak in church. I'm a pastor's wife. And if I cough or if I laugh or if I tell my child to sit back down, you know, I, I mean, what does that even mean? And I teach, you know, children's Sunday school. I mean, it really comes down to how literal you take the scriptures. There are people that will take it very literally. For example, the New Testament gives guidance on how to deal with slaves and respecting and taking care of your slaves. Does that legalize slavery for Christians? Does that mean that Christians can have slaves? Well, no. And that comes down to your exegesis, how you interpret and apply the scriptures. Same with the scriptures on women wearing head coverings. We know that that was very specific to a specific time, to a specific context. And those whom read the scriptures literally need to have to wear a head covering then. And what they're failing to do is understanding that that's contextual to that church's issues, to the time, to the period, to the problems of even just a new church being set up in a pagan world. And, you know, pagans worshiped this way and Christians were worshiping another way, or they should look different and not be misunderstood. Women who didn't have their hair covered were viewed as workers of the sex trade. There are some people on this topic that will use that card on everything. And they'll say, well, everything is contextual, then nothing applies to today because it all was dealing with any kind of how to live the Christian walk. And we know that can't be true because we know that there are things that are timeless. So the question really comes down to what is timeless? What is still literal and timeless for all generations and what applies to just those people then? That's like the basics, as simple as I can put it, I think what he's referring to when he talks about bypassing the scriptures. So let's keep going. They are on both sides of this issue. And I mean that very genuinely. I'm not, I'm not afraid to throw down a gauntlet 
moment and say on this topic, like, this is not secondary. Like this is, this is, I will die on this hill. Like I'm not going to die on the hill of women in ministry. This, I'm just, I'm not, but I realize it's important. So we're going to talk about it. I am so glad he said that. I mean, I even needed to hear this because I had a lot of guilt, even just starting to read people on the other end, because I've been so scared out of reading the bad people on the egalitarian side. And I just needed answers. Why is that an argument? You know, why does that happen? Back when I was in college doing my undergrad Bible degree, there was a girl in my hall. I was an RA and she was asking questions of why can't there be women in leadership in the church? And I had those questions and I was suppressing them. We started talking and we had really good discussions of just like, I don't know. I'm in full surrender, God, whatever the answer is. And so I forget how it happened, but essentially I mentioned that to somebody in leadership at the college and my college set us up with the woman in charge of all women in our PCA and what we can do in the church. And we got a lecture. How dare you ask these questions? Women have plenty to do. You can basically be an ordained minister. Stop asking questions. Get back to your studies. You've got enough to study. And I remember being like, well, what's the point then? And feeling like I couldn't even ask that question. Like, what's the point then of making different roles for men and women in the church if women are just gonna sit there and strive to have that same equal standing with men the whole time anyway, to bypass rules and to get as much that they can do as possible. You know, it just seems like I felt shamed. Let me just say that. I felt really shamed for asking the question. So I love that Mike Winger says basically both sides are Christians. This isn't a hill to die on that is a necessary part of salvation. Just like the differences in baptism, you know, it's debated. Can you do infant baptism or should it just be adult baptism? But that's a debate for a reason. Just the same here. They're both believers. There's gonna be people in heaven that come from all angles of this discussion. And I love that he says that. I need to hear that more often because I really do come from a shamed culture when it comes to this topic. Topic. Let's keep going. Women in ministry, if your answer to this question is, I know I'm called. I know I'm called. I'm called to be in ministry. I don't care what the Bible says. You've bypassed the Bible. All right. So he's just talked a little bit more about what he means by bypassing. And he basically talked about coming to the scriptures with preconceived notions is how I've talked about it before on my channel. What you're wanting to get from the text. And he talks about people who come into the Bible and they're just looking for complementarian verses or people that come to the scriptures and they're just looking for egalitarian verses. And he addresses the fact that like that is bypassing the scriptures. That's saying I'm coming in with this conclusion or this bias. And that's the answer that I want to find that comes down to, are you coming with what you want to get from it or are you coming surrendered? And that's really the thing that I've found is the most important as I'm researching this topic is that is the core issue is my life, Lord, is yours. It's his. One of the hardest things here on YouTube is the fact that I will get comments all the time. Where do you preach? Where's your pastorate? And while I'm a pastor's wife and I make that very clear, I think one of the hardest parts of my life is, well, if women are allowed to, then I must be called to. And that's really truly like the scariest part of this whole discussion and why I put God in a box and never even let myself read people from the other end of the spectrum because it would cost me everything. And I referred to this in one of my past videos recently, maybe last week or so. If women can preach and I can get ordained, I'm called to that. I know I'm called to teach and I know I've God's given me that passion and that mission and I have it up on the wall over there. My you know, lifelong mission is to preach the gospel to every country, to every nation. I was running one day, my treadmill's right there. For the meantime, my treadmill's right here. It's not gonna stay there, but there's my prayer board and it says across the top, you can't see it, but it says preach the gospel to every nation. And I was running there on my treadmill and I started bawling because I realized my core calling over my life that I feel and sense is to preach the gospel to every country and that is preaching. That's that's not just teaching. That's not just making videos that reach people in every country. That's preaching. And I was holding on to this thing that I don't even know biblically. God, what am I called to? And so I love how heartfelt he's being with this. Now he comes in just completely honest that he has reached a conclusion. Unlike me, he knows where he's planted and he is holding to that complementarian viewpoint, but he's doing it kind of honoring the other side and the other discussion. You know, so I love that he is honoring the other end of the spectrum. I'm going to honor them because they are part of Christ's body, his bride, and God loves them just as much as me. Let's keep going. Is based upon something that I would consider a huge mistake as we approach this topic. And that is a belief that if women are equal in personhood, it rules out differences in roles. This is a philosophical belief that I come to the Bible with, right? So then the Bible's not allowed to change my mind on that. 
I did need a pause. He's making the argument once again that you can't come into the scriptures with preconceived ideas about any of this or else you're coming to the scriptures kind of getting whatever you want out of it and you're gonna twist them to get whatever you want out of them. And which is a good point, like 100%. But also I do have to challenge, he keeps saying, yes, but I believe that we're equal, but we're created equal, but we're created equal. And I feel like that could so easily be one of those things that bypasses the Bible then. That could so easily be called one of these things that you're not supposed to bring to the Bible or else you're coming in with preconceived ideas. You can definitely misuse scripture right and left to say that we're not created equal and it was done historically in the church and especially like medieval times because women are beautiful and sexualized. They were viewed as a temptress and therefore they couldn't stand behind the pulpit. I'm gonna push his buttons a little bit. That in and of itself is a preconceived idea that is new to the church. That wasn't something that was viewed as a core tenet of complementarianism from the beginning. That wasn't a core tenet of biblical womanhood from the very beginning. That is a newer idea that wasn't always accepted in our complementarian circles. But let's keep going because I love where he's going with this. Uh, being human has to have every particular role that involves higher capacities of humans. It just seems very confused. But an example of this is the Levites, okay? And and Dr. Gruthwis talks about the Levites specifically. So she responds to this argument. We'll get into that. He does spend the majority of the video talking about ontologically, does the debate really kind of ends up circling around of the inherent ontological value. If women are not allowed to grace the pulpit, does that change our value? And he just kind of talks so much to explain that he doesn't see the connection there. I don't know if I do either, to be completely honest with you guys. I don't know if I can connect the dots there from egalitarians, but I do know that I probably sympathize a little bit more as a female. And it does make me feel inherently less valuable than Mike. Mike can and go pastor as God allows and as he feels called and I cannot. And so there's this struggle of when I'm reading, I'm trying to follow intellectually what they're arguing from all the different sides. And yet there's this feel that's entwined in it all. And I think that makes it hard for Mike because he's not a female. And then he closes with what he's not. He's not gonna let scripture submit to culture. And I love that. So I love that he also makes it really easy and understandable, I feel like, while also getting into the weeds and like actually reading the quotes so you can see where he's coming from. That is one of the main reasons why I hesitate to talk about this issue you with my patrons or on my channel because I know people will not watch the entirety of this video and they will immediately try and make assumptions like clearly she's an egalitarian and oh man she is not a believer then and I'm not gonna watch any more of her videos and then there's the other people you know that are wow she's really closed-minded I can't ever watch any of her videos and so to just to be completely honest with you guys I'm glad I'm in the middle of the road right now I'm glad I cannot pick a side because I know I will lose friends if I do <laughs> I'm very much mixed and I don't even know what to, to call myself right now. I'm, I'm listening to all the people, reading all of the things, and I legitimize all of the arguments mostly. The point is, I really like his approach. I'm really interested to see his future videos. I won't always film responses to them, I don't think, just because I would love to go on this process learning with you guys. I will go ahead and link his video here if you want to go watch it if you haven't already, or maybe he has a new one out already by the time you're watching this. And I hope you guys enjoyed just this raw, real feedback. And I will see you guys in this video about how to read the Bible and how to grow deeper. And it's oftentimes by reading multiple people and diving into these awesome debates. This is one of the most messy ones in the church, but I find a lot of enjoyment in it, the process to be quite worshipful. So I'll see you guys in this video. Bye guys.